Welcome to Story Break. It's the show where we come up with a brand new film idea off the top of our heads, and if you like it, it's yours. I'm your host, Chris Brennan, and with me today to break story is screenwriter, director, and podcaster, Connor Howling Dowling. Connor, welcome to the show. Chris, thanks for having me here today. It's been a while, but I should say it's good to be back. Yes, that is true. Um, I've said this a couple times in our recent Writing Shop Story Breakers okay. episodes, but this used to be a podcast that myself and Stevie Ryan hosted for a couple of years, a few years ago. I think we got to about 100 episodes. Wow. And you, my friend, were not only one of the first, but you were a very much a repeat offender yes. for coming up with stories off the top of our heads. Oh, my God. Yeah, I remember when you and Stevie told me the idea of the show and at the time I was barely even knew what podcasts were as a listener you know since then mm -hmm. I've become totally obsessed and podcasting is a huge part of my life but at the time I was very much you know just out of film school and trying to become a screenwriter and the idea that you came to me with was that yeah exactly what we're doing today if we're going to come up with an entire movie and if the audience like it it's theirs and there's a almost a little bit of like intimidation and like you know hesitation when you hear that you're like oh like how how first of all how are we going to do that and second of all what if we come up with a really cool idea and i want to keep it for myself but yeah weirdly like we would always come up with an idea and secondly you would just kind of let it the idea then like live out there in the world and whatever would come of it would come of it but i know that i was there in the very early days and we recorded like two episodes like straight off the bat. And I, I remember one was this really cool uh, noir movie, but it was like a sci-fi. It was like set in Roswell, New Mexico, but it was like a detective who was kind of clumsy. And I just, that that idea has always stayed with me. And you and I have even talked about like, oh, maybe let's turn that into something. Uh, it's still a game for that, by the way. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is kind of rekindling that a little bit. It's just, it, it just, I could just, it needs to be made, you know, and mm -hmm. hopefully we're the ones to do it. But then you also very thinking ahead of your time uh pitched let's do a gremlins reboot and this is at the time when reboots and requels and all that were really kind of kicking off you know yeah. uh in a big way I, so that was such a fun experience working in that like ip uh but then we did a third one and i can't remember exactly what that was do you have any it, i know we had like in our mind we were like oh our lead guy is like Jason Siegel and was it a comedy or was it like a it was like a caper of some sort oh my goodness I'm not sure um you've done so many episodes it's just like yeah. in the sea of ideas what and that just came, yeah there's a couple of comedies that spring to mind I'm not sure which one you might yeah. have been a part of but there was one where the storyline was a group of friends win the lottery and then they dedicate uh, the, their fortune to making their friend famous against his will so that was a really fun one and i feel like a jason siegel type would be uh, in that yeah. there's also one where it was definitely a play on modern fandom and maybe we were just ahead of modern fandom where it was like this this kind of talk like this stuck up fan is like they're not doing my my film or my series right so then he becomes a showrunner and they're like why don't you figure it out that that is it and i can barely remember that idea <laughs> like that is crazy like we spent like however long an hour an hour and a half coming yeah, up with that yeah. idea beat by beat and i just it just kind of was like a little nugget of an idea in my head as as i was trying to remember them but now that you mentioned i think it was yeah i think it was something like that that is so crazy yeah yeah that was a fun one too yeah, yeah. that was like you know the barstool um quarterback or the coach who's like i would do it this way and it was like you make a story yeah. about somebody it's like off you go you, yeah figure it out like <laughs> yeah. you, you learn it yeah. uh yeah so that was it but uh yeah now we're back again a couple of years later a little wiser but probably still as immature <laughs> and and yes and still as intimidated <laughs> you know but, like can i still do this you know? yeah and a few more hairs on the chin for some of us <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely oh my goodness I, I would not like to see a side by side photo of myself many years ago that was 10 years ago but this is going to be really fun i'm really looking forward to it today uh so i guess the first question is then what genre are we going to be doing Okay, so I love all genres equally. Mm -hmm. Maybe some some a lot more than others at times, but 
Uh, one genre that I don't typically gravitate towards when I'm writing uh, is the, the action thriller. And I was thinking about this because like, I love that as a genre to watch, but it's almost like it's something that I've never really tried to, to put pen to paper on before. So I thought that would be an interesting challenge. And I feel like you've got such great kind of like eye for like action movies and that kind of thing. I think that could be a really interesting one for us to tackle together. Yeah, absolutely. And in fairness for this concept of story breakers, kind of a traditional like genre like action can be really right. helpful because there's usually a framework or a yes. recipe to follow. Yes. So if we get stuck, it's like, oh, do what they did. Yes. You know? uh, yeah, and, and we have lots of references as well, things that we can kind of uh, draw from. We go, oh, well, what happened at this point in, say, Die Hard or John Wick or whatever? Right. Um, that could help us. So what kind of action thriller were you thinking of? Would it be something kind of like John Wick, but very action-y? Or were you thinking of something a bit more cerebral or like, because with thriller, you can kind of also go the detective seven serial killer, silence mm. of the lambs route. Mm. Like, are we leaning more towards the action -y side or the thriller side? I think I was like, yeah, I think I was leaning that bit more towards the action -y side. But okay. when I hear you talk about like seven, I'm like, oh, that could be interesting to kind of have something that is that sort of dark, but has the high energy of the action movie if that makes sense okay okay yeah we can kind of mix them a little bit together mm -hmm. um i guess one is like the john wick it kind of created this other formula as well of like the um known the known actor who like is out for revenge right. and it's very much kind of a fist and kicks kind of affair yes you know, so, I mean, if we wanted to go that route, we could. Um, I Maybe that would be something where we want to mix the genre a bit because that's. I think that actually there's quite a formula for that that mm -hmm. I actually think we should have a bit more fun with it and loosen it up a little bit. Yeah, um, yeah. And you know what springs to mind immediately when you talk, when you think of it almost as being um, talent-led, so to speak, like, mm -hmm. you know, because, like, yeah, John Wick, like, is Keanu Reeves like you know that like that movie that franchise you think of him and like I'm almost thinking of like using sort of like an older kind of actor because like I feel like a lot of the really cool actors that we kind of grew up watching are now like maybe slightly aging into like a different kind of generation okay and if we even like look at like things like like Taken or like Death Wish or like the, the Clint Eastwood kind of you know action thrillers like like casting like a slightly older male lead could be a really interesting idea. Yeah. And I was thinking because if, if we're going down that route, one commonality they have, uh, these kind of films have together is it's like this main character has been wronged and mm -hmm. they're out for revenge. Yeah. But immediately we could flip that around and maybe he made a, a decision and now he regrets it. And now mm -hmm. he's trying to change that. And, mm. they, and now the obstacle is like, no, 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 don't. Like, I don't know. He put a hit out on someone and he's trying to stop the hit from happening. Oh, he's stop like, the hit. He's like, stop. Okay. But now he actually has to defeat the people that he's hired or something. So yeah. it's like motivation wise, it's just reverse. So it's not yeah. like you killed my dog or yeah. um, I'm looking for revenge. Even the killer, the new um, David Fincher. Which I film, haven't seen yet. But I've that has a bit too. of the revenge, and he's yeah. he's a hired assassin, but he's out for retribution. Mm -hmm. I think you'd immediately have a different energy if you have that kind of strangers on a train vibe. Have you ever mm -hmm. seen strangers on a train? Yes. Like where these two people agree to kill the other person's yeah. uh like yeah. enemy or yeah, or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And then then one's like, oh no, 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 don't, yeah. don't do it, don't do it. I, like, another having, thing that also springs that vibe into it yeah. might actually have a fun uh, dynamic. I think that's super interesting. Yeah, because the, you know, oh my my wife or kid or whatever were you know killed. That's a little bit like you know we've seen that a lot, and it it can be a bit of an easy way out. Another movie that springs to mind is it's not necessarily an action thriller, but it does involve someone putting out a hit on someone. Is the movie? I think it's called Crimes and Misdemeanors. It's like a Woody Allen film. And uh, I think it's Walter Matthaus. He's like an older guy. Uh, and he has put out a hit on his wife. But then like 
you can see the regret you can see the oh what have i done for me you know right. um and it's really it's really impactful you know you're you're okay. really with them the other thing i think as well is interesting like i feel like there are so many shows and movies about like spies and assassins <laughs> and i'm like i love like barry i just recently watched uh, mr and mrs smith i thought it was great the new one but i'm just kind of like i feel like there's like there's like more shows about spies and assassins than uh people in the real world actually have a reference point for so i'm like how do we kind of like humanize our main character and have them be that bit more i guess relatable like oh that kind of could be me or that could be my dad or whoever you know you know what i mean yeah yeah I, i've recently watched to barry as well so amazing that was uh fantastic yeah no it makes sense um so you could have a character and maybe he isn't even a hitman it could be if he's older might be a bit more cantankerous i'm not sure what age we're talking about but it could be this like somebody has screwed him over or mm -hmm. took his uh took his business out from underneath them. Like if he mm. spent decades building something and yeah. then you remove it from him in, in this frustrating moment, he might make a decision or he meets the wrong yeah. person yeah. and kind of sets it in motion and has yes. to turn around and stop it from happening. Yeah. You know? <laughs> like, and every time he tries to stop it or get in the way of it happening, maybe he sort of temporarily uh, cuts off or slows it down, but then somehow creates an even bigger problem you know he, he puts out this fire over here but then a bigger fire kicks off over here and he's like yeah. sort of chasing right after it or even like have you ever seen dread the yeah. carl urban film where yeah. it's like he like it's the the he goes into a building like and has to like go up the floors like oh, one yeah. by one mm -hmm. so there's like this framework i really like of like literally gamified levels of like mm -hmm. gotta get to the the main person at the top so there could be a thing where he's like i just need to get to that person and mm -hmm. has to find his way in and up yeah. and like hell and high water he's not stopping um yeah but it it might not be that it's he began that way it could sure. just kind of eventually kind of like it, it snowballs gradually right. into this more very extreme scenario where he was like i just just say no just stop it just stop it and yeah. it's out of his hands and now he's trying to squash the uh concept yeah i love that yeah like would you even like think that you know the th like, jumping ahead but like the final act or the finale like is him entering that you know office block or terror block and doing those levels or are you thinking of having those levels be sort of spread throughout from the beginning. I think it could turn into that at the egg for this idea. We probably need to set him up more. So it'd mm -hmm. be tough to rush yeah. his decision to mm -hmm. like get to like, yes, the first 20 pages. I, mm -hmm. I don't know. For some reason, I'm starting to feel like we're going to tap into something interesting with a character mm -hmm. like this. Yeah. It'd be a shame for, him to, to just make kick a decision off on seven minutes in, yeah. regret it 12 mm -hmm. minutes in, and yeah. have him knocking on the door 20 minutes in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, it could be like we've already, like, and this is important for story breakers too. Like, we don't, I, it doesn't, sometimes it's helpful to jump ahead because now we actually know where we're getting to. Totally. So if we're saying that the third act is going to be, he comes to this complex mm -hmm. and has to like, mm -hmm make his way up like if we set him up well this could feel like totally. an insurmountable task mm -hmm. and we're like how's this guy gonna do this this yeah. is crazy you know yeah that's awesome so we're saying it's basically gonna be an older man an older gentleman like what kind of age range were you thinking i mean 60s 70s okay interesting you know it just popped into my head who bruce campbell <laughs> that's a... that fits the bill isn't yeah. that crazy like like because you know obviously we know him as you know a swashbuckling Gosh. you know cheesy kind of hero guy but if he's like in his 60s maybe he's like you know close to retirement and in this world he's not super you know tough or like he's a bit more of a you know typical typical man of that age mm -hmm. but then he sort of that 
those qualities come out in him as he goes through this experience and by the end he's that bit more heroic and ash like yeah that could be do you think he's more serious though he's not like all all yeah. out wild yeah all right exactly because could you could totally picture it being like i'm trying to think of like you know like when, even when like when brian cranston did breaking bad everyone's yeah. like what like the dad from out in the middle is like right. this badass and now that's all we can picture him as but it's like yeah like coming coming back you know with a this is this is bruce campbell's comeback movie where we're like oh you think you know this guy well here's a totally different side to him and he is of that generation who you can buy that he might have had military training when he was younger mm -hmm. like he, he served yes. he was yeah. in the service and so there's a bit of like actual practical fight training that he had yeah. and maybe he moved on from it but it's still there so we have a reason behind his action. Yes. There, like when the action kicks off, people aren't going, Yeah, the old guy can do that. It's yeah, like, yeah. He's gonna build it in. Even if so, it was an entrepreneur, maybe it was something about the service uh that he left the service and maybe he dedicated his time to it, which also makes him quite sympathetic because if yeah, somebody comes in, like if he's dedicated himself after serving in the military to like helping like veterans and then he gets screwed over immediately. Like the audience should feel like compassion for him because yeah. his, his business or his occupation had a bit of nobility to it. Mm -hmm. And then they kind of be get kind of ran out of town or kind of screwed over. It puts a chip yeah. on his shoulder. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, if you want to bring the kind of the veteran aspect into it and how like, you know, in society, like veterans are, can kind of be taken advantage of or like left behind by the government sometimes you know and not to get too political but like it could be you know some politician that kind of screws them over you know because sometimes in political campaigns it can be kind of like trendy or like um what's the word i look for like sympathetic to be like oh we're gonna you know help the veterans and then do nothing about it you know so that that, that there could be some kind of corruption along there in terms of Yes. And it also gives us a link to how he might meet a hitman or somebody like yes. somebody who's connected to like a unit that, you know, like mm -hmm. like th there's servicemen that he's met and pe new, maybe new people. So mm -hmm. I don't know. I can just imagine him waking up one after a big drunken night. And he's like, oh, my God, what did I do? Well, <laughs> it's like, totally. it's like. God, did I just like I can see a, a Bruce Campbell pulling that off, going like, yeah. I think I just yeah. put a hit out on a guy. Yeah. <laughs> like, How do I and stop you know, it? <laughs> you know what springs to mind is, uh, you know, so whatever has what he's been screwed over, right? And he's drowning his sorrows, and maybe he's you know drowning his sorrows with one of his like, like wild old war buddies or something like that, you know. Yeah. Oh, you know, I like I would love to show show teach that guy a lesson or something like that. And then, you know, he plants a seed unwittingly in his war buddy's head, and the war buddy kind of goes off. You know, he sort of sets him in motion. And he, he's like the, the person that starts going after the whoever the the, the politician or the attack. Oh, interesting. Is. So I was thinking it could be very similar to that, but like the war buddy brings him to the person who's like right. real official. Yeah. Here's yes. the guy. Here's the guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is yeah. the deal. Yeah. I want him to I I, I want yeah. this done. I no no take backsies. Because even yeah. there'll be yeah. a, a scene later where he goes to his buddy and yeah. it's like, there's no refunds. It's like, what are you doing? Yeah, you yeah, 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 yeah. You can't return. There's no, no return that, policy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's great. That's so good. Yeah. Yeah. So I think we immediately have enough framework to uh to kick us off mm -hmm. to be honest mm. um so i guess we can leap back to the start mm -hmm. and uh let's give him a name um we call him bruce if it if it makes it easier sure yeah um so bruce is a a veteran who left the war and dedicated himself to some kind of charitable um occupation or something non-profit or something yeah and i guess before we can get really back to the start let's actually investigate a bit more of who this person is that screwed him over like you said a politician which i think is delicious because 
if he did put a hit out on like a, a bit of a high powered person, it's even more wild. Yeah. yeah. But if this person I, is corrupt, then he'd have goons. Exactly. <laughs> and I can branch out like who is the corruption, you know, who are the people who's this politician embroiled with that then, you know, what's the, the butterfly effect of that that they start getting involved as well. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think that's really fun. Yeah, I think so. So I guess I mean, do we need the specifics of what his organization is? I guess it doesn't really matter for sure. a dirty first draft, but we yeah, can kind of yeah. explore it just in case something comes up. Mm -hmm. But Sometimes you can kind of run down this road too deep. So if, if we're getting nowhere, let's just go back and go, look, totally. yeah. this is just uh, his business. Exactly. Insert, insert yeah. figure out later. This is where you put in the placeholder of he has a he has a, an NGO, a uh, nonprofit. Uh, he helps people and he's very proud. He's very proud of the work that he does and he's respected. Yeah, he's respected. People tell him he should be running for some sort of, you know, maybe small local office or something like that. And he's like, no, no, no. I, you know, I, I know who I am. I know what my work is. He, his identity is kind of wrapped up in this thing that he does. It gives me a little bit of Arrested Development vibes. I don't want to go too goofy, but mm -hmm. it could be like where... Um where Jason Bateman thinks he's going to get a promotion, but it turns out like he didn't. Yeah. Like, I feel like he's yeah. going into this event going, I don't know, like it's a big deal. And then something happens where it turns out like his entire thing was just been liquidated and absorbed. And it's just like, yeah. what do you mean? It's, it's gone. Like all mm -hmm. the money, the fundraiser, like everything yeah. is just gone. Mm -hmm. And it just went to this, like corrupt politician slush fund or something, yeah. you know, like, like where he thought like this was going to be the culmination of mm -hmm decades of his work it yeah. just turns into it just funded into it just kind of got picked up and carried off for some uh politicians fundraising scheme and he's like that was that was my what about the veterans yeah. and it's like they might get some of it and it's like actually they won't you know yeah and this makes me kind of question like from the beginning you know What's this guy's problem? What's Bruce's problem that he will ultimately overcome through this, you know, um, this journey that he's about to go on? You know, like when you when I hear you describing that, you know, potential situation, which I really like, it makes me think like, oh, does he have a heart? Like, even though he is a, a veteran and he's respected and all of these things, does he have does he have a hard time, uh, you know? speaking up for himself or it's not exactly that but you know what i mean it's like like if, even if you look at breaking bad you know people are kind of like walking all over walter white right at the beginning and he, that's the way his life has kind of gone and there's a bitterness there and there's you know then he, his quest for power kind of like you know um kicks off what is it with bruce that we see from the beginning, we're like, oh, this guy, he seems, he has a lot of things, great things going for him, but if only he wasn't this way, then maybe this thing might not have happened. I like when you were saying maybe people are like, you should be the one running. Mm, like, it kind of right. makes me feel like this guy, the people tell him he should be the face of this, and he's like, no, no, it's not, I, I can't do it. Like, mm. he's actually, and for Bruce Campbell, it's weird that you make him shy, and yeah. kind of introverted, I can't right. do it, I can't do it. Yes. And it's like, but you really care about this cause. You really care about these people. And it's like, yeah, but I can't stand in front of it. Yeah. It's like, well, you should, you should stand up for it. <laughs> and there's a bit of back and forth of like, um, you have to stand up for yourself, but also this cause. You have to like put yes. yourself out there, mm -hmm. even if it makes you uncomfortable. Yes. And he'll end up having to go on this journey to like yeah. get get it back or like to take back. Like basically, I guess his journey is to stand in front of his own decisions and like become the uh the a leader yeah the leader you a know? leader and and suddenly i'm very excited for this to become an action movie <laughs> right <laughs> i'm like whoa like what's gonna happen here like this is gonna this is gonna be insane because if on this journey he kicks a lot of ass great but if he does it in a way that you know um serves some greater good he becomes a hero. He becomes such a leader in that way that, you know, uh, 
everyone else you know is like like the politician or whoever this or whatever organization like they are fake leaders they're false leaders that don't actually really care about empowering and helping people but that's like kind of his whole thing he just hasn't yet stepped into that power you know yeah no i think it makes sense and even in the end it could be his journey is he actually exposes the uh the falsehood of what happened so yes uh then he's like he's front and center to have like the cameras on him and going how do yeah. you figure this out and he's like i don't i don't i don't know uh yeah. and people are like go for it go talk yes and like, you know yeah like you're the you're you should you should be the face of this cause yeah. instead of and be behind the scenes totally and because he's able to legitimately expose whatever corruption was going on he can be exonerated for all of the the chaos that ensues throughout the the action movie aspect of it you know because he's gonna there's gonna be some some car chases and some destroyed property and some maybe some killings and you know yeah. he's gonna have to account for that you know and i'm sure along the way there's gonna be those moments where it's it's gonna look like you know he's gonna be locked up or uh it's true kind of makes me think of the end of home alone actually where everything is great and then wasn't it biff or no butch or what uh is it big buzz yeah yeah, yeah. he's like kevin like and you actually <laughs> forgot like he just trashed the room so yeah, yeah, yeah. it could have this anywhere was like you don't want to go up there like yeah <laughs> A building is like you you save the day like just don't just don't go up yeah <laughs> like you don't want to know what i did to expose it you know? yeah <laughs> maybe you don't want to yeah. yeah i mean we'll figure it out as we go yeah. right okay. <laughs> cool. so i guess we start off and we have to set this character up um he's a a veteran he has a fundraiser or a kind of a initiative that helps uh veterans out um and if we and we want to set up that he's not like he, maybe somebody wants to interview him and he's like no no i don't i don't mm. i don't get down to a camera you know it's like mm -hmm. what are you afraid of like kind of build that kind of yeah. fear into him because yeah. at least that way we'll kind of see it come out of him yes. uh later on right mm -hmm. that's good yeah i like that and uh probably set up other characters around him does he have an assistant a brother a sister yeah a, i think what's his wife his, yeah like does he have kids so is, is his marriage maybe you know what's his marriage like um journey whatever helps us i guess yeah um i don't know a part of me thinks giving him a wife and having a, a loving relationship might be nice instead of the yeah. cliche kind of uh he's divorced like, and he's yeah yeah, yeah the the yeah. the solo kind of shriveled mm -hmm. old man full of regret yeah he's like actually he's got a loving family you know yeah. and he's done yeah. well um i don't know if we're boxing ourselves up because there's a reason why those people exist in these films is True. It, it, it leaves them open to yes. being able to take on these tasks without yes. going well what does his wife think or you know yeah. like, there's a reason I, why those tropes have i agree i life. agree but i think i think your your instincts are in the right place because i think it if it adds complications to him and his journey you know i think that's a that's a good thing you know like uh if if there's people after him they're also after his loved ones as well you know right. uh it's hard to be that like rogue um you know vigilante if uh you've got a family you know if you've got a, if, if 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 the rest of your life is actually pretty like you know okay like you know so so like whatever he does draws all of this violence and chaos towards him and in and it could be to... kind of fun too if he goes home and then he wakes up the next day like he he accidentally or he doesn't accidentally like in a fit of rage and kind of remorse mm. he puts this hit out on somebody and yeah. he, he wakes up the next day and he's talking to his wife and she's like well you better go fix it you know like yeah you know like yeah. you can play on the he's not hiding it he wouldn't conceal exactly. it he's literally exactly. like oh god like what do i do he's like go yeah. and go and fix it like just go yeah. and then that's like where he's like okay i don't yeah. know where we then it like really escalates from there i think i think in the very first instance he would try to hide it you know he's like oh i just gotta go ahead and take care of something and then as it becomes more uh 
and like, oh, there's there's no hiding this. This is like gonna turn into some. Then he has to bring his wife into it. He has to, you know, like, uh, and 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 she's like, okay, you gotta you gotta do something about this. But if he's going to put a hit out on somebody, we have to make whatever is done to him or his business. We have to make that like really like really big like like it it it, it crushes him and it, it 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 makes him so angry that he would you know get super drunk and make this like really bad decision do you know yeah it could be something where i don't know like this is so f- vague and fuzzy right now but i feel like if you went with something that like somebody has taken like a lot of veterans are gonna lose their um, benefits or lose a lot of money or not get access to the money. Like there's mm-hmm. a, there's thousands and thousands of people who are like, or radically impacted, like yes. life changing impact on them yeah. because of this one crass, greedy decision mm-hmm. that feel like there, you could get that to that level of emotion. Cause mm-hmm. again, what I like yeah. what you said early on was this is a, um, a group of people who've sacrificed and they never really yeah. get what they deserve back. Like they don't get like the reward for what they, they give up. So um, as a kind of moral in the story, that it is kind of nice to shine a little light on that. And totally. Make their, make, make their retribution or the justice for them kind of the point of his decision. So it is him with his business, but he's also going like there's, thousands and thousands of people who aren't going to get the care treatment finances and even livelihood that they deserve because of this and he's frustrated and he's trying and he's also trying to take it back like he's trying to yes he's also trying to take the hit back so yes. it isn't something where you're going i can't believe like like he can't believe he did that <laughs> yeah i i totally agree and i also think that if that thing of this let's say it's a it's a veteran fund or something like that you know yeah. that the, with the, the with the aim of um you know like helping veterans re- readjust to to the world or offer benefits or care and he you know he's at the head of that and someone screws him over but that it makes it look like it's his fault you know it makes it look oh. like you know oh you're the face of this major screw up you know yeah. uh bruce you know even though you were trying to help all these people it looks like you screwed over all these people and he has to take that like he has to take that on the chin and you know as the and be the face of it but meanwhile he knows or he, he somehow he finds out he's like it's that guy it's that it, i i made a bad decision because this person led me in that direction and he's actually been deceived in some way you know yeah yeah no, absolutely he's been tricked but then he's mm-hmm. the one who's blamed for it like yeah and he feels the guilt he feels the guilt he's like yeah this is my fault you know but then it's like something happens that he's like you know or like the politician or whoever says something a certain way and he's like son of a so and so stitch me up here you know and that's feel like we could probably get it to it's a businessman with political aspirations Mm -hmm. so we're not really with secret service yet but sure this person is bad and he's moving into a new stage Mm -hmm. of a political career um and he's just screwed over bruce um on his pursuit of this so we're not really getting into like actual governmental uh people guarding him like you're Mm -hmm. still in the um the business world the kind of private uh, the private uh police the private security kind of aspect or goons that we can kind of get mm-hmm. bruce to start like yeah. interacting with yes know? yeah but also it, it, it will be nice to kind of indicate that this guy is going to be moving into that area totally well so you're like oh like somebody should stop him you know <laughs> like, like yeah and who he is now yeah and you're seeing basically this person moving into leadership you know uh through dishonest means where you have bruce who is more you know like an honest respectable person uh who's shying away from leadership you know so you're seeing that reflected in the bad guy i think that'd be really nice so it's like yeah it's like he's not he's not straight away but 
he's not straight away in politics, but this lie he has or or trick he has orchestrated to take this fund from Bruce is going to fuel his political aspirations. You know, it's gonna help him get to the next level, I think. Right. Yeah. And I kind of picture like a lean kind of silver fox kind Ooh. of like Timothy Oliphant kind of oh, character yeah. who's like, he's not the kind of shrubby, like older gentleman. Like yeah. he's, he's a, a wily fox mm. who's like out foxes people his yes. entire time and he's moving on. So yeah. he can't be too young for that. So yeah. that kind, of, kind of beard is graying, kind of, yeah. kind of a suave, sophisticated, gets whatever he wants. And this is he's already kind of made his, his fortune in whatever, you know, yeah. real estate or, what if this is he's moving into the next chapter of his career which is a natural progression for him but he doesn't have the same you know war hero background as bruce no nice. he's like he's like oh thank you for your service you know like <laughs> like uh very lip lip service around it you know right yeah i like that um, I think we could probably, should we just move in from the first act now? I think yeah. we want to get into like actually some of the meat of this. I think we got enough that you can kind of work out like totally. some of the stuff we're not going to figure out off the top of our sure. heads. Yeah. Um, but I wouldn't mind getting into. Um, oh no, I've been typing this whole thing into final draft. This is, we've got it. <laughs> I'm just thinking where we can land now narratively. I think like, could we just say he has been screwed over? He's and been screwed can, over by the Timothy Oliphant guy. Yeah. And he knows it. He is the face of this screw up. So his, you know, he's lost, uh, his reputation is ruined, but, but yeah. more so it's not so much about the reputation. It's about feeling that he has let down the veterans that he was trying to help and their families. And now he's what, like drowning his sorrows and with, the, with his war buddy. <laughs> yeah, I think so. And also with his, his his uh arc of he's an introvert he's shy like mm -hmm. him being blamed for it is even bad like is it is yes. bad? now he's being the spotlights on him he didn't want the spotlight now a negative spotlights on him yeah he's just like oh, i don't know how to deal with this and but yeah he, and and if he, maybe if he was that bit more like uh able to speak up for himself he would he would be like you know it wasn't me or it was you know he would be able to move the blame onto someone else but he's not able to do that yeah instead he goes out with his war buddy yeah um mad dog <laughs> <laughs> who's his war buddy like paul giamatti or something oh. like, you know? <laughs> just somebody who's like ah, you know, like yeah 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 they like, kind of again a different mold i i yeah we could go the built kind of sure strong yeah. route, but i don't know i kind of see this kind of like shitster i think That's paul giamatti cool. would be like Right, I'm going. Like, yeah. I can't take this shit. Yeah. I know, yeah. like, I know a guy. You know, it's like, yeah. come with me. Like, you know, he's introducing him, like these are these are my poker buddies. You know, yeah. And one of these guys, like, he's got it in with yeah. an or like a group. You know, we yeah. get them in. They hate this guy as much as anybody, and we'll pay, you'll pay him. I we'll, don't care if, about how he gets yeah. how he pays them or whatever. I don't really care. We can <laughs> figure that out in the next draft. Yeah. But, and what if uh, what if the what if the 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 understanding is oh yeah Paul Giamatti's guy will help us get the money back, you know? Ah uh, yes. He'll help us get it. He'll help us get it back. He'll take he'll take care of all of this. But then it's actually like, you know, whether it's a call or a text in the morning, and it's like, yeah, the the wheels are in motion. You know, Timothy Oliphant has has a hit on him. Now. Yeah, it's yeah. like what? No, like, that was you know. It's like, or is that just... is that too kind of like like is he not active enough in that? Like, do you think that Bruce should be like, I want this guy dead, like, and then regret that decision, or is it okay that it's like, oh no, this just got away from me? I think it could be a bit of both right like mm -hmm. he's he's feel like it's, it's it's his emotion he's feeling at the time and mm -hmm. he sets it off um but these guys are there to kind of like cheer him up and be like yeah look this is a great idea like use this energy you know and, yeah, it's yeah. Like, and they're yeah. drawing 
yeah. his decision there, out. There's the old Bruce I remember. Old, yeah. old Bruce wouldn't have taken this crap from anybody. You know, he would have been down there. He would have been, you know, breaking skulls. <laughs> yeah. Know? And then I think who he hires has got to be an absolute animal, like a asshole, mm. like just a like the because the. Now I'm thinking he wants to stop this hitman. We can't be on the hitman side either. Like we yes. gotta want to see this person. This has to be a bad person, and we want that person yeah. to like be punished because. But he's also probably Bruce's. Um, while he's trying to save Timothy Oliphant, Oliphant's people are stopping him. So he has to like they they think he's after Timothy, and he's actually trying to save Timothy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like because I'm like wondering who's he beating up because he's trying to stop yeah. the hitman that he's hired. Yeah. But I think he's he has to get in there, especially in that yeah. third act kind of high rise yes. uh, thing. He's breaking into a place to stop a guy from getting a hit, but they don't know that, right? Oh, so, right. So yeah, so maybe like the, the 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 person that he's rescuing at the end is Timothy Oliphant. Yeah, exactly. You know? But yeah, like, okay, right. Yeah. Like they're um he's been trying to stop this hitman, but each time, like in a car chase, things like this, like he gets himself into this mess and then he, like he has to get himself out of it. But like they're all action oriented, and like they P maybe Timothy thinks he's the one who's like trying to uh kill him. Like this guy wants to, this guy's trying to kill me. I'm trying to save you, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I like the idea that, <laughs> like, and this might be more complicated than something that you build out in like a, a slightly later draft, but like that it, his actions set off a bit of a chain reaction. Again, I feel like I always come back to Breaking Bad, mm. how like, you know, by Walter White, like trying to get a bit of money to pay for his, uh, his treatment, he ends up starting this like cartel, gang war thing where all of these different factions are like you know killing each other sort of unwittingly because of him and then ultimately it all kind of you know narrows in on him or focuses in on him so i like the idea that he's fighting off timothy oliphant's men because they think he wants timothy oliphant dead which he kind of did but he's also fighting off the the syndicate that is um to do with the hit person the hitman or yeah. woman uh character and then maybe some other gang or some mafia faction that are like oh how do these guys get involved and it's like he's like just cleaning up his mess yeah and he's making more messes as he cleans yeah. it up like you can get the other organization in based on his first encounter trying to stop the hitman mm -hmm. kicks off an entirely different group to be like yeah you you've wrecked something of ours and like, yes. you just keep pushing yeah keep pushing him into different obstacles mm -hmm. um constantly mm -hmm. so yeah i guess that's that's the uh the framework that we're pushing him into okay. um it makes sense i think it's he's he's went out with paul he's gotten i don't want to be like he's drunk but like he it was like his real emotions Yes. And he's hired this guy. Um, and the guy, like, the next day he regrets it. And he's mm -hmm. talking to Paul. And Paul's like, dude, when he takes a job on, he's gone. Like, he's the out. Are in motion. Like, he's like, you, I can't contact him. Yeah. And the reason is because too many people back out afterwards. It's like, <laughs> it's like they, they, yeah. it's now. You said no cold feet. You said no cold feet, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So then he's like, well, I've got to find him. So what yeah. you're having then is right after the first act you're kind of now in this kind of investigation like how do i locate mm -hmm. this guy and he probably has to go from like place to place and kind of yes. meet people and that's where you can have action scenes because he's going to do a bit of interrogation yeah and similar to do you know where we can kind of get a lot of inspiration could be in midnight run mm. do you know midnight run it's an yeah. incredible yeah. film but along the way just trying to get Charles Grodin from like point A to point B. He gets the mob on him. He gets yeah. all like, and all of a sudden all these different groups are chasing him down. Um, so I think you can kind of get there with like whoever he's interrogating first, he'd probably go to 
that location where that guy originally was like when he yeah. first met them you know yes and okay so two, uh, two thoughts so i would also just to throw in i think in this section timothy oliphant if if uh, bruce is trying to warn him let's say or kind of like check in on him timothy oliphant is actually ducking him because he knows he's just screwed this guy over right so yeah. it makes it that bit more challenging to actually reach him so he has to go to the location of where he originally enlisted the hitman yeah and let's say the hitman's not there or the hitman's people get uh suspicious and they're like oh like this this sounds like some kind of setup or something like that and they they like you know tie bruce campbell and they like interrogate him or something like that or they throw him in the trunk of the car rough him up you know and he yeah. has to kind of fight his way out of that situation that could be like our first kind of action thing and now he's really pissed off the hitman the hitman's people i think it's great so the only note i put on that is like where he was that last time could be like a card game like right. some kind of like area he goes back it's a completely different place like it's, yeah yeah it's like a, a shop front kind of like yeah. is this is this the place and they all work there but this is like the yes okay the, the oh, place. Fun. okay yeah so it's like he's going in this place and he's not really understanding it they're all playing like they don't know who he is oh okay. he, does, he doesn't recognize them yeah um but then he finally sees one of the people from mm -hmm. like the night before so then yeah as you say i actually like the idea that he's like they get suspicious of him and they're they jump him and you have a maybe it's not even a fight scene at the top maybe he does just get knocked out and then wakes right. up so like we're like I, we don't want to just have him kicking ass immediately totally. i yeah. like the idea that it's like he's being interrogated and he escapes so like yeah there's like he's responding to some conflict early on yeah i think let's rough him up a little bit and he's like because yeah he's not he's not action man immediately yeah but he's he like that. oh this is real this is this is bad this is like i just got a taste of what's about to happen to tim the oliphant what have i done you yeah. know um and in the meantime the pressure is still on around what happened man what happened to this fund like that you were you were in in charge of you know uh, like a lot of people put their faith in you you know mm -hmm. we were supposed we trusted you and you kind of screwed you, you let us down you screwed us over and that like destroys him but it also like fuels him to be like i gotta you know i gotta pursue this you know i, I can't uh i can't let i can't just run away from this problem you know i have i have an emotional stake in it and a moral obligation to not let this timothy elephant guy get offed yeah no that's really interesting because while he's trying to stop the hit he can also be trying to figure out how to reverse or all of like to get the money back and yeah. it's probably going to end with like all confession at the very end right that kind of exposes it and however he does it i don't know like, yeah you know, he saves all and still all is like that money's gone Thank yeah, you. Yeah. I'm glad you saved my behind here, but like that money's gone. So he has to like, you know, squeeze it out of him another way. Like, yeah, something like that conversation was recorded and mm. and yeah. broadcast live. Oh, because he didn't want to go on camera. He didn't yeah, want to yeah. Come yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah, yeah, very classic -y kind yeah. of uh, genre work with this. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think, yeah, let's have him he's asking too many questions there mm -hmm. they recognize him but they're also seeing he's being a problem and he's yeah. so they jump him they he wakes up is he in the boot of a car or is he tied to a chair what, what, he, what, they, they, yeah like they chuck him somewhere you know they, they they like take off his clothes and they like you know send him off and just make him look like a crazy person or something you know what I could be even... interesting if they like if they like force fed him a big bottle of whiskey or something like that took off his clothes tied his hands and left him on the side of the road and he just people are like this guy is really losing it you know he's <laughs> like he's having a breakdown i could even see logistically from what were the chess pieces we're playing with that they'd probably be like let's hold him until the job is done mm, and okay. so they're actually like let's let's take him put him in a car take him far mm -hmm. away 
-hmm. and he's like tries to escape because like for them they're like the deal is done and now you're gonna get in the way so Mm -hmm. we're just gonna hold you captive until the uh the job is finished and then we'll let you go or whatever you know yeah Um, so because he might quite like they want to stop him from stopping them is what i imagine their kind of motivations are from each side right yes so i have a question on motivation why are they so because i just suddenly now feel like why are they so gung-ho on we have to see this through is they're there because is they're not part of them that goes oh if, if if the if the buyer is suddenly having second thoughts do we want to go through with this thing maybe there's a, another layer of complication that the hitman is like you know oh if i do get this tim the Oliphant guy then it's somehow more beneficial for me regardless of what what bruce originally wanted you know because like yeah. why wouldn't they just pull the plug on the operation is is, is a, a little question that comes up yeah i mean it could be one thing where oliphant is gone like he's they, they can't reach him because that's kind of the thing so keep this guy from interfering but it could be um they see a value in like they might have uh another deal with what they want to get out of uh, oliphant as well i don't know because we don't have much of the concept of what this fund is but it could be revolving around that what if what if the original hitman goes to oliphant and like through some situation where oliphant's security is really good or because he's working with some dodgies they take out the hitman now the hitman's people are like okay this is no longer just a hit this is like you know he's he's killed one of our own and then they enlist the real like like, team of people yeah yeah team people are the real like oh this is the person who you call when shit goes wrong I like it because um, there's more people for um, (laughs) Bruce Bruce to take out. But also, this is a snowball effect of what's happened from, like, one decision, you know? (laughs) He's like, 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 call off the hit. And they're like, we don't care about the hit anymore. We are after this guy. (laughs) Yeah. 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 I like it. No, it makes sense. So at that point, then they so they then they still jump in though right like yeah. early on yeah why do they do that uh i would say he's 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 getting like worked up he's getting worked up and he is starting to show a little bit more you know confidence and like telling telling them off and they're like Maybe they fear that he's going to expose them. He's going to expose like, them, yeah, because like I think I like what you said about like you know the outfit that they're running, like it has a cover, and he's yeah. like, yeah, he's kind of messing with that. Um, I also think because like this is in his world, I think he would be like talking about going to the cops and stuff like foolishly, yeah. you know, and they're like. They like they want to like shut him up basically, and, and they they, no, I think they, they have no qualms shutting him up. Yeah, you know, and I think you know. they do shut him up. I think he goes off like, I, I, I can't do anything here. You know, I think I think they scare him off. You know, and maybe that's when he gets he, something happens where it's like connected to how he feels about the people he's let down with the veteran fund that he's mm-hmm. like. I can't run away from this. I can't just wait for Timothy Olyphant to be killed off because now at this stage, I think if Timothy Olyphant's going to be killed off, I don't think he's going to get the phone back because it's no. now just among these, you know, warring hitmen. Yeah. So he's like, he has to get to Olyphant. I like it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think, is it that they actually... They rough him up and leave him. You were saying like in the middle of nowhere kind of vibe. Make him look crazy or something. And then it's his walk back. Because I, I agree. I, I picture him getting his ass kicked. Like just, Yeah, yeah. 
like he should be in rough shape and constantly yeah. put into rough shape throughout yeah. this. Um, yes. So he's coming back. And then I guess he's now going, he won't go back to them. He's probably going to try to bypass them and stop the people that they've sent. Right. Like, mm -hmm. or it's going to be his probably next move is to warn Timothy of what's yes. coming. And that's exactly. the other, that's where he gets kind of ping pong between the two. Right. Yeah. 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 So he go, he's going to go, he's going to try, cause he's already been trying to get in touch with Oliphant and that, you know, he's like I said, Tim the Oliphant has been ducking him because he's just screwed him over. He doesn't, he's yeah. the last person he must talk to. But now, if he tries to contact him again, two of the Oliphant's guys have just fought off a hitman. So they're like, we don't want anybody knocking on our door right now. So he has to be clever and find another way to get to Oliphant. That this is maybe where some of his other skills that he has or knowledge that. You know, maybe he's investigating or he's scope, he's does a stakeout or something like that, that cleverly gets him to Oliphant. And maybe when he gets to Oliphant, he gets the shit kicked out of him again by right. Oliphant's guys. I like it. I feel like we should be bringing Paul into this new yeah. stage, like where yeah. he, he enlists the assistance of this guy who has mm -hmm. a skill set that could be beneficial for this exact purpose. Yes. Um. So if we know that like kind of a building is going to be the end goal, it could be something like he's trying to get to him at a fundraiser or something very mm -hmm. visible. Yeah. And he's trying to get to this guy at um, kind of a hotel reception and all in his hotel room. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it can't be outdoors. It has to be kind of a unique new setting. I could see something like that actually mm -hmm. Before the guy's going to take stage, is like, I'll, I'll get to him right at this point. Yeah. And then he gets caught or um, he should encounter him. And right before he can kind of end it, it happens. You know, like, yeah. like he nearly has, he's nearly got a, he's nearly got the information he needed to get. But uh, I think it's gets, gets taken out. Yeah. I think that Oliphant's, you know, still in the process of doing, launching his political uh, career, you know, so it could be at a press conference, it could be at a, at a like, a, like say, like a fundraiser or like a, a political debate or something like that, where he's like, where it's big and it's public. Um, and Oliphant is exposed, but still protected by his, you know, he's exposed in just in terms of like access, you know? Mm -hmm. So Bruce is like, I know, I've just heard that he's now going to be running for some, you know, obviously not like big, like not like Congress or something like that, but like something like on his way, like he wants to be a Senator eventually, you know? Right. Um, and that's where Bruce can kind of intercept him. But like you're saying, before he actually gets to that's when he gets like roughed up again. It could even be before all of that. So it's not really the rally setting. Mm -hmm. And it's actually Timothy is meeting politicians. So what happens is in mm -hmm. this environment, there is Secret Service there. Yes. And there are like so that, that is another group of people that Bruce <laughs> then yeah. has after him because he goes and confronts Timothy Oliphant in this setting. Yeah. where there's actually government officials there who yeah. are like this guy's done even more more uh this guy has done even more damage to his name after the bad uh deal that that uh resulted with the lo loss of all of the funds yeah so it's like we're he's not launching his campaign but he's kind of making the deals with the right politicians in this kind of club kind of setting like kind of a prestigious kind of club a golf club but not really okay. you know like and yeah he's like that's where he is i'm gonna go get him and then when he gets there he's like oh shit what and he's like surrounded by secret service and he's like god damn it and that's where like that dynamic can happen yeah. um and so there's a different group of people that he's now offending or who will be after him okay so i 
because I know we're like into our second act, right? I've got two ideas, right? Okay. First of all, we're talking about like recruiting Paul to help. I think he tries that, but Paul is like, he can't get through to him, right? And he's like, literally, like, he's like, dude, like, he's like screwed. He's on his own, right? So he really has to go this on his own, right? Yeah. Then we come to this like country club or golf club where it's like a big, important event, all of these like, you know, politicians and stuff. And this is where Oliphant is going and he, he now has, you know, whatever he's pilfered from this veteran fund to sort of back him. And he's like, you know, he's going to have big important conversations here that will um lo- like you know be the first step towards launching his political career yeah he's but making making friends yes but there's yeah. gonna be secret service guys there because um uh what's it called um because there's other politicians there there's yeah. gonna be oliphant's bodyguards there but also the hitman syndicate are fo- basically following bruce because they know he'll lead them lead them to oliphant and this could be a great situation for like chaos to kick off where that's true so and but the outcome of it is even though it's chaos even though there's there's secret service guys and hitmen and bodyguards all killing each other it's like bruce like saves oliphant and they like escape together you know Mm -hmm. um like i think that could be like a cool kind of midpoint i think so and i don't like i makes complete sense i don't even think that the syndicate would follow right bruce i think that they're they're basically following timothy and Mm -hmm. is this going to be the place where they do it and so he actually has to stop them while public while being while people think he's the one totally (laughs) he's like i'm trying to save him (laughs) yeah crazed you know crazed uh whatever his role is in that the veteran uh fun this guy this is the, the news headline you know he's kidnapped like uh yeah. this beloved you know future politician yeah and they've escaped and it's it's this really that you almost get into this kind of like weird buddy kind of territory where they like they hate each other but uh he, he's like helping him you know he's he's safe he's trying to save him I like it because then he has to protect him for a little bit until yeah. probably Timothy's people. I can just see like a car just smashing into them and they collect uh, Timothy and he, they yeah. get away. And it's like, but they're still after you. Like I yes. just, I, I haven't gotten anything back, yeah. but it's probably here. And again, we don't have to get all in the details, but probably in that moment between saving him, running off with him to protect him that he gets the clues that will be Timothy's downfall in the end. And he gets yes. the the funds back or yeah. he exposes Timothy for like, it's in that scenario that that information happens or yeah. like, that's the twist the the, the callback to like how he gets, how he gets the material back mm-hmm. or how he exposes Timothy is in that moment where he's alone with him. And I like, think he learns I- it. I think so. I think t- so. He basically rescues slash kidnaps Timothy, right? Yeah. And they're basically on the run. Timothy thinks, you know, he's like kidnapping him because, you know, Timothy knows he screwed Bruce over. And Bruce confronts him here and he's like, no, you screwed me over. But now there's all this crazy stuff happening. And I think they have like, they fight, you know, I think they, they kind of have to scrap each other a bit. But like, yeah they're in the middle of like fighting and that's they get they get t-boned by like the hitman or something like that and they have to like go on the run or like t- timothy gets kind of taken away there um i like i just like this idea of like i'm trying to rescue you but also i hate you and you know you're my enemy i kind a- of i see like a vibe of like bruce is driving the car and timothy's handcuffed next to him like yeah. kicking the shit out of him and he's like yeah, you yeah. Would you stop driving? You know, like, yeah, and it's yeah. like, and they're like bickering, and it kind of gets into a bit of sibling bickering, you know? Yeah. Or yeah, like, would exactly. you stop? You know, like, and it's yes. like, they, the guy would be, uh, the Timothy wouldn't just sit passively and let totally. this happen either. Yeah. Exactly. Um, but yeah, I can see that. that that'd be fun. <laughs> so, like, he goes, so they go to the country club. This is the wheeling and dealing. Bruce is there specifically to warn Timothy, but when he gets there, he sees the Secret Service and he's like, oh God. 
So he's trying to maneuver around them. Then he sees the syndicate. Oh, God damn. And like, <laughs> he sees this powder keg about to yeah. happen. Um, we're getting quite into north by northwest territory actually right okay like we're playing in that wheelhouse because you even said earlier they got them drunk and left them oh, selling like yeah. a bottle of whiskey yeah. and that happens where they get um okay they get Cary grant uh drunk and they put him in a car nice. um but there's also the thing of while you're in a this is a, i think 30 39 steps which is very similar to mm -hmm. north by northwest uh both hitchcock um mm -hmm. But in order to escape a public scenario like this, he gets uh, like in, in 39 steps, he actually gets up and like embarrasses himself publicly right. by getting on yeah. stage. Yeah. And we have a character who is an introvert. Nice. And maybe yeah. this is the way he gets out of it is totally. by literally making yeah. a fool of himself yeah. to like get to get Timothy out of the way. Mm -hmm. um, and then he gets to him later. But I just imagine the scenario where. They're all kind of descending on it. And he's like, I don't know what to do. And he's like, I'll just make a horse's ass out of myself. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, I think that's great. Um, yeah, I I think that that's that works in so many levels. I love that. So so I feel like in, in that setting, there is a bit of a shootout. I also feel like I want to see Bruce do a little bit of action man stuff here right by this okay. time like he's about they're about to do a bit of a maybe maybe a, bit of a car chase there's some brawling like in the car between the two of them. but i feel like i don't know i think i think it's about time he does some kind of cool stuff that's like oh his yeah he's, this is kind of some of his military stuff kind of kicking in here well i think it happens then he get he embarrasses himself so that timothy is like ushered off so it's like if this guy stays here something could happen right mm -hmm. now I'm going to just make a scene and Timothy's ushered off. Now he has to, like, he'll be arrested or the guys will get him. So he probably has to leap off the stage, run in the back. And this is where you're actually going to get fight scenes happening yeah. where people like, like, like he's trying to, like, and he might even be confused as to who is the secret service, who he doesn't want to hurt because that's yes. just men yes. doing their job. And then yes. the syndicate. So he's like, he hits a guy is like, oh no, that's the yeah. wrong, like that's the good guys, yeah. you know. Like you can actually have like this really unique dynamic where good people and bad people are trying to stop him, and he doesn't know who's who, but yeah. he's trying to like work it out as he's fighting people. <laughs> yeah, it's he's almost like mediating the situation, yeah. like yeah. and I I love I, I also love like you know, because there is a sort of rough and readiness to it with like the brawling, the fighting and stuff, but it would be cool if like you know, say like he's he's like there's secret service guys. If he's just like, you know, I, I think he could play kind of like the older man card, like, oh, I don't know what's going on. But then suddenly like disarm someone really like stealthily and like uh, dismantle their gun and like yeah. tie them up. Like, like just do real cool stuff that's like from his skill set. But he's like, he's not like hurting or harming the Secret Service guys. He's just like kind of immobilizing them and then like doing some cool, like, you know, more violent stuff on like the... I don't know. I don't like. I like. I think. I think it'd be cool to kind of see some of that. Like, or or is that kind of making him too powerful? Do you think? No, I think it makes sense. You know, I mean, he's defending himself and disarming one group, and he's not. He's not. He's not holding his punches on the other. But yeah. then he can kind of get the wires crossed yes. and accidentally just knock a guy out. He's like, "Oh, I'm sorry." Yeah. I feel or like one of the Secret Service. He ducks, and the guy yeah. hits the goon, and he's like. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> and then he just takes it like then he just slips the the cartridge uh, out of the gun. cartridge out of the gun, you know. Yeah, yeah. I'm just like picturing like a Jackie Chan fight scene, you know, where he's like he's trying to manage all of these other kind of all these all these kind of things. Like, oh, I better make sure this person doesn't get hurt, but I have to hurt this person. Exactly. You know, no, I, I think, think he's getting hurt as well. Like, it's very intricate uh, yeah. in that kind of uh, dynamic. It's like a dance. Yeah, yeah. I love mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Um, I even think I don't know. It's it's so stupid, but I just have this thought of like he takes the cartridge out of a gun, but he actually gets like bullets out and he throws a bullet at somebody, and yeah. they're like, "Ow!" And just yeah, the yeah. visual of throwing a bullet totally, is yeah. like, "Ah, he shot me." He's like, "No, it's not." You know, he's like, it's "Like you're yeah. throwing bullets," you know. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Yeah. It's cool. But yeah, I think in the end, then like as he's trying to escape, because now he's trying to escape. 
because he put himself into a position where he's exposed and he runs straight into Timothy and he's like, you, and he just grabs him. And this is probably one of those things where you could do in films like this, where you can cut to the car and he's like locked up or you could have fun with how he gets him out of there. It just depends on where you want to go with it. Mm -hmm. Um, Sometimes I feel like it is a cheat when you just cut to the car. Sure. Um, I mean, the the visual that popped into my head is, you know, he's got him by the scruff of the neck and he just, he just throws the two of them like through a window, like, and they fall, you know, like a very like eighties cop movie kind of like action, you know? Um, But I like that idea, like the two of them landing on a dumpster, you know, rolling off and, you know, covered in broken glass and busted up. And then, you know, they're both kind of older guys. So they're like feeling like that bit more. And then they like, he like drags him into the car. Um, I also have, I a, feel like yeah. if they fall out the window, Timothy lands on something soft and Bruce doesn't like yeah, right yeah. next to each other. And it's just yeah. kind of exactly who they are as people. It's like, totally. Yes. Like, you've had the, like the you've had the silver ball. spoon kind yeah. of safety, e- easy life. <laughs> Yeah. It's like, ow, and he's like, God damn it. Like totally. that visual yeah. Bruce, Bruce ends up kind of worse <laughs> off, like uh no matter what. Um <laughs> and I also think um I think it would be cool if you know, because after this, it's I think the narrative in the media is or and in you know uh the law enforcement is gonna be oh, this crazed man who you know has has kidnapped this respected businessman who mm-hmm. believes like did him wrong you know but i also think they are going to think that bruce is like the leader of like the hitman guys they're going to think which is interesting if we're trying to turn him into more of a leader towards the end you know that's right he's, he's like wrongfully he's... accused as a as a leader of of this like crime group or something it could be fun because if he has timothy for even an extended period of time like where yeah they're in the car he's fighting them off and then he hides out clicks on the news and like this narrative is happening right in front of him he's like no 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 that's not at all like <laughs> and it's like he has no control over this but yeah. you have that little downtime where you have a bit of character work to be done there yeah and a little back and forth between the two of them but now you've got probably secret service yeah. syndicate and timothy's men after him and yeah. timothy yeah uh, which is is which gets us into that multiple groups yeah. all snowballed from one bad decision <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yeah and and ultimately you know his his intentions were kind of in the right place because he was trying to win back something that was wrongfully taken from him yeah um then timothy wants to escape though because that's where we yes. get to next yeah it's like this guy is wanting to get out, even though he's being told there's hitmen after him. Like he's like, he's got a bit of hubris to him. He's like, I'll, I think I'll get back to my people. We've already taken out one of their guys, you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. So I, I guess as I'm like real in eighties genre territory of like, they're hiding in a motel. Yeah. Could there be some, somewhere else a bit better. I know what you um, mean. Yeah. Like um some kind of bring... glamp glamping kind of site <laughs> like, yeah, or know. like just something different like i just want a different location yeah. than that i think he brings i it could be funny if he like brought him back to his house and he's like interacting with the wife and stuff and bring bring the wife into it a bit more oh Maybe. that's interesting i also there was another thought i think because we kind of alluded to it before the way we said like oh the original hitman got like off by timothy's uh people yeah. and it sort of triggered the syndicate to um you know go after timothy's people so it created this kind of war that bruce campbell has no control over yeah i i want to activate you know their big boss in some way like who's the person sort of behind the syndicate who's like oh now i'm gonna have to get my hands dirty here like what what actor or personality is that person because i feel like this could be a good moment where they're seeing this you know shit storm happening and going okay now i need to step in and clean this up interesting i think this person should probably be a woman to give a little bit more of a dynamic diverse yeah. dynamic and to get some kind of even this could be a, a fun counter character moment as well mm. you know um but 
yeah, I, I like that. That the, the the there's a boss figure on the other side, yeah, who is um has now activated, and they're like, let's get this, let's get Bruce, you know? <laughs> like, yeah, they're like, okay, I'm gonna have to gonna have to clean this up. Like someone who pops into my head, I don't know. It's not, it's not. I, I'm not married to this choice, but like, if you have, if anyone pops into your head, but like, um, like Tilda Swinton or something, you know, like right. just really kind of like regimented and you know kind of a like clean cut um but like deadly you know that 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 pops into my head but maybe there's there's some other direction that would be more fun to i think in. she's in the killers actually oh the the michael fassman movie yeah yeah oh, fun. okay i still haven't seen it so uh yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I've, I've probably she actually plays a character very similar yeah. to this <laughs> or even like like constantine or something like that i feel like she's kind of like does something like that or, yeah or, i mean yeah that julianne moore some somebody who's a bit different that would have a you'd have a lot of fun with this yeah. type of character someone who hasn't actually played it but yeah tell us when it's great for it no i Jeez. think i think it'll be good to go i think you're right i think someone who hasn't who we haven't really seen doing something like that would be interesting yeah like uh, be good it's also like i think I think in the in these kind of movies as well, it's like how because we we have sort of justification for why Bruce is able to sort of gradually become an action hero. You know, mm -hmm. what is the the backstory of someone who is that you know clean cut regimented head of a killer's organization? You know, like what's their background? I'm not sure we'll get too much into who they are, though. Um, yeah, but I just feel like it would just just justify their presence and 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 like why they are the way they are, you know. Like not like super detailed, but like, are they ex-military too, or are they, you know, ex-government, or like could it even be a startup? <laughs> you, know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, like they they actually come from silicon valley you know yeah, and they're like yeah so hey somebody's gonna look after these types of people you know yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah that's actually go a different route because if he's got yeah. the military background yeah. subvert the expectations and be totally. like no this is like real startup culture kind of you know like there's, a, there's like actually like um a co-working space <laughs> things yeah. like this, you know like they have free beer like yeah. actually have a different dynamic to yeah. what you would imagine a hitman organization would be this is very much a regimented thing then you actually have a lot of fun with the head so, of it being somebody who actually is portraying a ceo or a co-founder yes. uh yeah. like, like that. that kind of executive level uh person mm -hmm. um yeah I think that's fun. Yeah. Then we have Bruce with I, I by the, so you're saying he goes back home. I don't think he should go home because literally they would look for him, but he should call his wife who yeah. will like bring stuff to him, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like because I agree, we gotta get her in. I think that would be like, hey, just like, and she'd kind of come in and be like, what are you, what is, what is going on? Like, I don't yeah. understand, but she's with him. Like, yeah, <clears throat> she's not going to leave him hanging. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, she is just kind of startled at mm -hmm. like how far and how wild <laughs> this has already gotten. Yeah. yeah. Totally. No, I think that's awesome. I think, yeah, she's, she's helping out, but she's super, cause she's seeing this stuff unfold on the news. She's like worried about him, but ultimately she knows he's not like, you know, he's not what they what they're saying is he's not this like criminal mastermind that they're painting him out to be i know when they've ever seen bad neighbors or neighbors yeah like, they, like i remember seth rogan is in that and he was saying as the actor as like one of the creative type behind it that they they wanted to have a relationship where the they didn't hate husband each other. and wife yeah. are like both idiots and i was okay. like I, I can really like like well basically they're dumb as each other so you don't have the idiot man and smart woman yeah. dynamic. Mm -hmm. And I always really liked that. I kind of resonated with that notion of you don't need to have the goofball idiot and then the stern wife. Yeah. I think that, that I would love to go in that direction where she's like 
I, I'm here to help you, but she's not yeah. coming in chastising him. She's just like, exactly. I just don't, yeah. I, I don't understand what just happened, yeah. and, but she's going to help him. So you I get totally rid of the, the kind of the, the stereotype. I feel like it's not, it's, it's an unfortunate thing that happens to a lot of uh, actresses and the female characters yeah. because they have to come in with a bit more of the reason and sensibility mm -hmm. But they're actually taken away from the fun. So the audience usually turn on them by going like, well, don't stop the fun. Yeah, you're trying like, to point out why it's not fun. Exactly. And, like, and go back to Breaking Bad, like the hate that um, Anna Gorn got, he played Scarlet yeah. White. Like, I mean, that was just insane because it's like, yeah, like don't don't stop the the, the, the cool guy from doing all of the fun action she's, stuff. She's a, she's a great actress. Yeah, so very reasonably minded character, justified like in all of the things that she says and does. But like, the audience want the chaos and carnage, yeah. and there and she's an obstacle for your yeah. protagonist to get around. So you have this weird dynamic where you're rooting against her, even though you shouldn't. Yeah. But for this, I think it would be fun to play with a kind of a supportive position more than a chastising position of like. Yeah. Why I told you not to. It's like coming in and going like, yeah, look, I got you this stuff or whatever you need, yeah. you know. And coming in and she's like, what can I do to help? And it has this different energy to it. Uh, so it, could be it makes me think of someone like I don't know if the ages match up perfectly, but like you know, like Shelley Long, you know, like um, Diane from Cheers. Right, she's right. Just like super like funny, but like has done that kind of like crime caper. Uh, chaotic energy kind of stuff i could totally see her being like you know uh having similar energy to to what's going on with bruce campbell what you have is you set that scene so well if she comes into the hotel room or wherever <laughs> and bruce is like i know i know and timothy's like yeah this fucking guy you know like and she walks up to timothy and smacks him in the face yeah you know and it's like she's she staked her allegiance to bruce yes so like that moment where like bruce understands i know i know mm -hmm. i'm sorry the other guy's like can you believe like free me and she's like i know yeah. who side i'm on like exactly. you did him wrong like, yeah. that would just be such a nice moment i think yeah absolutely because <laughs> she's she's it is personal you know she, the the legalities of it all doesn't really matter to her you know i think that really shows like yeah, her allegiance. I think mean, that's such a nice, nice way of doing that. Well, she can still be mad at Bruce because of mm -hmm. like how far this has gotten, but yeah. she's like immediately showcasing she's got his back, she's on his side. Mm -hmm. What can I do to help yeah. you out of this situation, to help us out of the situation? Totally. So it should be quite, I don't know, it'd be kind of a, a really refreshing moment. I think if you do it yeah. right, the audience really expect that other side of things, you know, like, yeah, oh, here she comes, and then she's like, no. <laughs> what can i do you know i love that yeah that's awesome um so then we're now with these characters and i think we've got to get uh probably an attack on that area so you have a different action scene then which is yeah. uh kind of a um they're i forget the word but it's the rio bravo uh scenario the assault on precinct 13 it's where like they're they're boarded up and they've got to get out or mm -hmm. hold off people like you're yeah, in this kind of environment totally. so if even if we look at the section of the movie sort of post midpoint look at like you know bad guys close in that's a, the term they might use like where the bad guys are kind of like like you say we've activated this you know uh ceo um villain type and she's like right okay let's stop fucking around here you know we we can find out where they are and let's send in the the big guns and there's a full-on like assault on maybe it's the hotel that they're in or, or wherever they're hiding out and they have to they have to escape from there yeah i think so and again this idea it's a little off this topic but just as it's like twist near the end what if it turns out that the guy that was hired to kill timothy and who was killed actually joined timothy so he shows up later and he's like he was bought off and paid for and they just said that he was killed just so you have this other person from earlier who's kind of like okay. a bigger goon that you're like oh he's alive you know like okay oh and that's like a one-to-one -one battle that bruce has to get through the guy who he okay. hired who like 
uh, kicked it off, um, it comes back in. I just like it, I know it's a later scene, but I was just thinking right now of that's interesting. Like, yeah, like I, mean, I suppose it's the uh, it, we would have to work it. I think it can work. I think we would just have to work it so that that person really was trying to, for whatever reason, escape that syndicate that he was a part of because it has created him sort of faking his death and switching sides or whatever. It has created this kind of war between the two, yeah, you know, just to make it more complicated. Maybe he wants to take over, you know, the thing like, uh, it, it, yeah. you know, it could be a little bit complicated, but I think I think we could hold on to that idea for later and see if it, if it helps us, you know, Yeah, exactly. But yeah. now now is the um, the Oh, what is the term like they're like they're breaking in they're, they're infiltrating the okay, compound yeah kind of. the siege the siege there yes it is. Yeah. yeah this is the siege scene and where we want to get these guys to is they escape but timothy gets, gets. away from them yes so that's where we're trying to get to with this scene so in the yeah. end he has to still get back to timothy save him stop the bad guys and then expose timothy for the crimes he did commit so, it's kind of where we want to get to. Yeah. So does does this scene or sequence end with Timothy being like captured by the the Hitman Syndicate? Like so that we're so we're kind of like you know we get to that point where we're like oh all is lost you know Timothy's going to be killed or something like that. Bruce is going to be framed or. I'm just trying to think of what what we're trying to get to. I like the idea. I just don't know off the top of my head mm. why they wouldn't just kill Timothy right away. Right. Was, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, like mm -hmm. I lo I like the idea that he's no, now right. been like kind of hot potatoed yes, around yes. different people. You know, that is a good point. Well, I mean, it could be at the kind of thing where they have to capture Timothy because he has, you know the codes to the phone the, the mcguffin you know, blah blah, that, yeah, blah. Like, yeah, yeah, well, yeah like they're yeah. like if we kill him now then the, the this crazy veteran phone that was worth however it's worth a lot it's worth a oh, lot yeah. of money if we kill him we can't get to that so i don't know if that's exactly it but like but yeah you're right it's like why don't they just kill him off like there like, i do like it though and this is something that writers would figure out but yeah. I like the I like the idea that he gets taken by the other people, and mm -hmm. now Bruce has to get him back, and Timothy's people are also trying to get him. So he has a the fortress he's going to could be like the syndicates in the end, not Amazing. the yeah, not the um, not Timothy's group, but yes. it's the actual Hitman kind of yeah. Hitman Inc. or whatever you we call it you know <laughs> yeah yeah exactly they're like a they're like a tech company that they masquerade as a tech company but they're actually like you know doing some really dodgy uh not just not just hitman stuff but like real black market kind of and stuff. that's why like we went back to the earlier point when he meets he goes to that location mm -hmm. and it looks now like a startup kind of like mm -hmm. he's got the reception with the smiley yes. like it's super, like, would, like, you like of... would you like a cup of coffee or maybe yeah. a a German imported beer and is like Fiji the water, is you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it, it looks yeah. like a trendy modern office, you know. Yeah, which is a fun place to yeah. have the final it's act. <laughs> totally, yeah. I it's love like that. just just kind of working your way through a WeWork, like a yeah, and, WeWork building. And it would be funny if the if the people who you know, because these people are basically um, you know masquerading as these like we work style office people but then there's got to be that moment where he's like you know he's like realizes that they're actually like hit men and women you know so they're it's all like the guy, <laughs> the guy with his like macbook and his glasses and his cup of coffee like you know suddenly starts busting out like <laughs> i love like it's so this. different it's so unique and we've got this this new location where you can imagine again the kind of jackie chan Kind yeah. of complex choreography. Yes. But the location itself is a character then mm -hmm. that you kind of have fun with, where you have yeah. all the bells, whistles, and kind of 
uh, accoutrement of yes. these unnecessarily high spending startups where it's like there's a foosball table, yes. there's beanbag chairs, you know, like there's like there's all this stuff, but like this, they, they, they this syndicate, this hitman kind of startup vibe thing, uh, follows that route, and that's where he has to like work his way into infiltrate and get to get to Timothy in the end. Absolutely. And I also think that's a great setting as well, because there's something very youthful about that and very sort of like exclusive, exclusionary or exclusive of like sort of older people, like, like mm -hmm. stereotypically, you know, and even like, you know, like veterans and stuff like that, like maybe Bruce's organization is very kind of like modest and, you know, like they get the job done and they help people, but like the, the tech, company the we were place whatever it is that's yeah. just very like oh it is that sort of unnecessary spending but very like youthful and kind of like oh we've no time for what you're up to also somehow they that crime syndicate slash tech company thing hitman inc let's call it hitman just inc. for Hit it for our conversation Look, not yes like... great hitman inc are <laughs> somehow going to take that veteran fund and funnel it into their company right yeah in some, in some way i think we'll work out the dynamics later i mean not but like we would yeah. work it yes, out but yeah, yes, yeah i think we even early on was like the motivation is whatever this fund is the money behind it everybody wants it was mm -hmm. kicked off by bruce and now it'll it's going into who's going to end up with it and in the end, the veterans should get it. Like that's where he should succeed and yeah. get it back. But in the quest, he ends up exposing Bruce, kind of taking down Hitman Inc. and becoming like the leader or the figurehead of his organization that he probably should have been mm -hmm. the entire time. Yeah. Um, so that's where we're driving ourselves towards. Yes. Um, but yeah, I think you have so much fun in these, in like a startup like this. I mean, you probably have an elevator scene. I know the, in right. Winter Soldier, there was a really nice elevator fight. Oh, yeah. I, I like, for some reason, for action, I like just to condense it into a small space. Mm -hmm. Just like, yeah. if you have like a wide open room, like yeah. so much can happen. But a, a fight inside a parked car would, would like give me thrills, you know, like yeah. having some kind of elevator or a stairway, like it just kind of condenses it down. Yeah. So I also think, I also think that, so, so, so even just to kind of like bring us back to like the current moment of the story where there's this, so we know where we're going, right? Yeah. There's this, that scene happening. It's, it's Bruce, his wife and Timothy and, you know, like Timothy's men are trying to rescue Timothy, the syndicate, uh, mm -hmm. Manning's people are like, you know, like really like, coming out in force are we happy to just say that that ends with timothy being taken away and it doesn't look good or do we need to develop that a bit more like what happens to the wife in that scene like does does bruce get you know beat up even more does bruce get arrested or something you know like for i think um it could be something where they've escaped and they're in the car and that's when like timothy is taken and they both they they both separate and like they they take off with it maybe the car crash his car bruce's car crashes and he can't follow them but like they've absconded with timothy and bruce cannot go with them mm -hmm. i i'm not sure if we should really do anything with the wife or maybe uh, she gets taken too, but I feel like my, that might be a bit too much. Um, but I kind of imagine that they do get out of the building that has been seized. They're escaping, and that's when like the vehicle is slammed. Timothy's taken. He's probably just wrecked. Like he could be like just out like that. That car could have been like in a serious collision. Yeah, and he's actually like out and they're like like we got him you know like yeah. it looks like he's just done you know yeah 
So that's great. I have a potential twist idea that I want to run by you. Okay. Sure. So remember the way we talked about Mad Dog, Mad Dog Giamatti, Paul, his old yeah, uh, yeah. war buddy, who who kind of like got him in, mixed up in this whole thing, right? Yeah, yeah. An innocent mistake, or maybe now when Bruce tries to call upon Paul again to like help him out, and he's like, "Okay, look, I have to like go after." this like timothy guy he's connected with this you know he, he's been taken by this hitman in company and all what if paul like got him mixed up with hitman inc on purpose maybe this is too extreme but maybe he has some beef with him over this whole veteran fund you know he's a veteran as well maybe he's there's jealousy there's rivalry maybe there's something he's holding on to so that he takes this moment to set Bruce up with this hitman company who he knows will ultimately screw him over. I do like it because that's what I was searching for with the other right. goon. I was like, right. where's the, it comes back around and yes. a central figure from earlier is kind of like this mano a mano moment. Mm-hmm. You know, we were, we don't really have that because Timothy, we've, They've been encountering each other. They've yeah. had a couple of slap fights. <laughs> yeah, and 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 you think that like I could totally see Paul Giamatti being that like really like you know trustworthy seeming kind of friend in the first part, but I could totally see Paul Giamatti like becoming like you know that real bitter rival enemy at the end, and he could be yeah. one of the layers. To fight against in the um the organization when he's no i think it makes sense and he's the one who maybe he's the one who helps save them in the siege they're getting right. out and he screws bruce over and takes tim right okay yeah okay so it's cool. like oh my gosh we you're don't... here he's like come on come on yeah and you don't know why and you're like what the fuck like why would he screw him over like that and then it's there's a reveal of of you know why like when he does go and confront them in the uh, yeah. organization there's a bit of a villain soliloquy you know? i think so like and i don't know where that location could be it could be like an old bo- an old boy hallway kind of uh moment where he's after maybe a, a, i don't know it could be a choice too where he wants to go after paul but should go after the other guy you know like Mm. it's like don't get distracted by right <laughs> how, how yeah. many people you want to go after yeah mm-hmm. but no it makes sense so now you have paul this tilda ceo we landed on whoever that is but that's fine um they have timothy at hitman inc now it is bruce on his own who's going there who's also being chased by um other organizations that are the um the secret service could also be involved or we could leave them out. Um, but this could also just be Bruce now going after, Oh, it's Timothy's people. That's Timothy's who people. Yeah. yeah. They're right. The, they're probably on the prowl too still. Right. So I'm wondering now that, yes. Yeah, so Timothy's people are on the prowl They're They're trying to get Timothy back. They believe that Bruce is, you know, um, responsible that mm-hmm. they that you know for for timothy's disappearance and stuff um maybe bruce has to win them over or get them on side so that they can be allies not and it, not without a fight but like maybe they need to be allies to help him infiltrate the hitman inc this feels like a lord of the rings moment where you don't know this until they show up like right. you know like right he... yeah exactly exactly <laughs> yeah yeah like, yeah like they come and like they, the nick of time they yes. they come in and he's like who said i'm alone you know yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, it, it, that's exactly what i was picturing and it's like and maybe yeah we think oh no he's got the hitman ink after him and he's got timothy after him but then you know i don't know do you do like a little flashback scene like did you see um godzilla minus one no but i wanted to uh, there, well there's just a I, I won't ruin it but there is one of those things where like 
a big like kind of end piece moment you're like oh my god how is he ever going to survive this moment and then it cuts back to like this moment where this guy like or maybe it doesn't come back maybe it, it sets it up beforehand but it's a very obvious like oh well that's obviously how he's gonna like you know win in the end of the movie but um right. it doesn't need to be super obvious but i think yeah i think he wins that he gets them on side somehow which we'll mm-hmm. figure out in the next draft well i mean they want timothy back so yeah yeah and he... that like he'll he'll tell them where timothy is yeah and their goal is to save him yeah and they need bruce in order to bring them to where they need to go but we don't even need to have all this stuff like it, it yes. could be implied as we think bruce is going on his own mm-hmm. on having this big solo quest against like against this organization and then they come in and like they infiltrate and they help him so that creates a chaos around him so that he can then go after like go straight to the top yeah and that's where he meets paul that's Mm -hmm. where he encounters um the ceo yeah and that's where he finally overcomes the obstacles and gets gets his uh stops the hit but exposes tim <laughs> yes <laughs> Basically. and i think I, I i i because we have like timothy's man timothy's uh people helping him and we have the syndicate people i feel like we can afford a lot of bloodshed here you know i feel yes. like we can we have a lot of red shirts that can be <laughs> you know picked off here that'll be yeah. fun that'll add to the body count and it will also thin out the numbers so that Bruce really is then just face to face with, you know, he, he defeats Paul, he defeats Tilda, and then he's face to face with Timothy, who he thinks will now basically, you know, give him back the veteran fund. And Timothy is like, you know, still holding out on him. It's true. And he's basically taken two bad groups and they've taken each other out which yeah. is quite nice you know yeah yeah exactly yeah it's it's convoluted and simple at the same yes. time it's like you know yeah. he yeah like, we don't feel bit guilty for any of these people unlike exactly. the secret service scene earlier where yes like, he's like i don't want to hurt these people yeah it like, was the secret service guys killing the hitman and bruce was just sort of facilitating it yeah. mediating it um Maybe he gets a little confused and he tries to save one of those guys. He's like, oh, wait, no, you're bad. And then he just, yeah. he's like, oh, no, this is, you're all bad. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's interesting because, like, just from the tone of the movie, if if we were just watching Bruce going around, like, executing people, it would feel a little bit like, oh, how's he going to he's gonna come back from, from that? So if, yeah. if, if he's just sort of like, you know, I'm sure he will get some blood on his hands, but, like, I think he's just going to be sort of facilitating a lot of the. the... I know that's so what I like about it too. I agree, <laughs> and yeah, with the hitmen, he can take out hitmen. And, Even and, some you know, of uh, Timothy's people, they are bad. So yeah. you can orchestrate it in a way that he's killing killers and he's beating up goons, but we're and he's saving super secret. Like it, the chess pieces can all land exactly where they should. Uh, yeah, be and made. I think. It's funny because, you know, that movie, uh, the Denzel Washington movie, The Equalizer, I feel like this could be like the mediator or the facilitator or something like that, you know? (laughs) That's it, yeah. So, yeah, I think he gets through them, has that one big moment with Paul uh, specifically. You have to have that as a standout. Yeah. Um, I'm just trying to think of, like, spaces in that kind of (laughs) – startup culture where some of these scenes could take place or have this kind of yeah. like definitely the canteen like the can yeah. like these places all have these canteens that are like filled with like food fruit free drinks wild furniture like yeah well, like un- even uncomfortable stuff that people are like yeah. what are we supposed to do with this like there's a swing in one of these places you know yeah. <laughs> you could choke a man out with a swing yeah. like really explore the space of totally. what this a location and a concept would give us in this unique uh area mm-hmm. yeah. yeah yeah just bring, bring in those jackie chan choreographed fight elements that uh that utilize the environment yeah and then he gets through it do we need to talk a bit more about paul or why he did it or i mean yeah like i suppose like 
from that idea, I'm curious. I'm curious what you think because I I was just picturing that there's some sort of bad blood or chip on his shoulder, and I feel like it's 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 it, yeah, it's something between them, but also reflective of Bruce's you know leadership issues. You okay. know, like. Like, like maybe Paul was the leader of their group, but everyone always, you know, took their orders or like followed Bruce's example or something like that. Right. Or I don't know, you know, like that. So it's like Bruce was always the, the actual leader, but he was always, you know, you'd always kind of hang back. And then Paul could have been offered a leadership position at this kind of firm. And then he's like, they can respect me. They yes. see me as yes. who I really am. Like, you treated me like you never saw the potential in me. And look yeah. what happened. You've squandered everything. So yeah. mm -hmm. I, that kind of thing. So that's yeah. nice. I, I can I can go with that. Yeah. So they have their probably mano a mano fight. Um, Bruce Campbell versus Paul Giamatti. Classic <laughs> bout. <laughs> that's cool. Gets into the CEO, Timothy area. This is where, I mean, is he fighting Tilda or I wonder what happens here? Um, mm. Because he has to defeat them both yeah. and save Timothy. Timothy still has that moment then where like it's gone. He's not like, like it's, it's finished. Maybe the funds are gone, but somehow, I don't know, like we have to really invent this. But uh, yeah. like, I feel like the fun should be gone, but somehow Timothy ends up having to pay it back or pays it back or something. You know, he gets exposed for like his political aspirations should be torched because of this. He doesn't die. I, I'm happy if Tilda gets shot because that's literally a bad person, like, like yeah. a hitman. I, I almost see Tilda trying to like escape in a helicopter and like, it being sabotaged <laughs> in some way, you know? <laughs> right. <laughs> so, like, again, it's almost like, like, because, yeah, like, again, I'm like, I don't, I, I just don't want to see Bruce gunning somebody down, you know, uh, even though it is like an action movie, but it's like, if she's like, if she thinks she has the upper hand in some way and she's like twirling her mustache, like, ah, I'm, I'll get away, or, or like, she's like, I'm bailing on this. This is like a really bad, like, situation to be a part of and she's like executing her like you know bug out plan like you know because she would have she would have a way of like you know this is what i this is the protocol to follow mm -hmm. if all of this chaos comes to my door but like somehow it gets sabotaged and she like her helicopter crashes or something yeah that could have that could be the case even timothy could be involved with her death because you know <laughs> like she was going to kill him. <laughs> so there is something nice about kind of the Mr. Magoonis of Yeah, yeah, it is. It's, it's like a comedy of errors, like. Yeah, yeah. And then I guess we just need to figure out at that point how like what is the ending ending? Like we want to make sure that there's a public downfall for Timothy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure that funds, even if it wasn't the actual funds, is kind of like yeah. you get something back for yeah. other people because they shouldn't be punished for this. Yeah. So it might not be the original funds, but it could be something else. Yes. Maybe it's involved the like when it's all done, there's a um there's a, a Bitcoin or there's a kind of cryptocurrency yeah. that is of equal value mm -hmm. that's owned by the Hitman Inc. that they yeah. can kind of uh, totally. So, so uh, yeah, there's a, so we want, we definitely want to expose, you know, um, Hitman Inc. We want to expose uh, Timothy and we want to uh, redeem um, Bruce's, uh, you know, his reputation and, and and help the people who he was originally trying to help. I like there being some sort of like, you know, like is it like a, a live broadcast of thing being exposed of like Timothy being exposed or a recording that like kind of goes viral. Yeah. But I think what you're saying about the the Bitcoin aspect of it, could it be something like yeah, like Hitman Inc.'s 
stock plummets because of you know like they're maybe they are like you know a kind of a household name not being known as hitman inc or something and they are like the same level as like apple or whatever and once this goes public their stocks like plummet and then i don't know how this how this would all work but Bruce somehow gets control of that and then sells it and or it or or it sits on it and then it gets bought for like a ton of money or something. I don't know. Like I don't. That's where I think it's too. Like I think you want it kind of solved within the you want moment. It to be quick. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's where I was thinking with cryptocurrency and the, these wild different alternatives for finance. Yeah. That you're already playing in the modern startup space. Yes. Like you can throw in NFTs and cryptocurrency and have that converted pretty quickly. I have Bruce being really confused as to what it actually means. It's yeah. like, and they're like, no, it, it's like, you actually have this. And it's like, what, he, gets what? Gi- he gets given a check. It's like the Forrest Gump with the Bubba Gump's mom. Like he gets given a check at his front door and he faints. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, no, you're right. And it does need to be, it needs to be kind of clean and quick and make sense. Like, could, like, because, I mean, again, it is more of the details that would need to be figured out. But let, yeah. what if, what if like Timothy, just to make it kind of satisfying for the end of this, like, what if like Timothy had taken the fund and like bought a, a, a bunch of like Bitcoin or stock in something or basically placed like a massive bet, you know, that these like Wall Street guys like do. Mm-hmm. And his reveal is like that didn't pan out you know and these things happen that's just business but somehow that bet does come to fruition or something and the fun gets you know quadrupled and ends up i can see i can see actually going into the cryptocurrency space is the answer because they're like those things they can increase in value They're volatile and yeah. then just absolutely plummet yeah so we actually have it ending where um he he put it he like he's put the money into some new unique cryptocurrency that absolutely bottomed out and fell apart mm-hmm. but then bruce assumes control over he gets access to mm-hmm. that and then later on, he finds out that it's actually went up, and it now yeah. went and he's like, "Sell, sell, sell." And yeah, it's actually gonna be the ending where he's like, "Fucking get it, real money out of this," you know? Yeah, I think it it probably whatever triggers it to rise is something to do with Hitman Inc. plummeting. You know that yeah, ha- yeah. that has this kind of snowball effect thing that's been happening. I agree. You know, and it's and it's yeah, like maybe there's like a really quick like, you know like a uh, warring stockbroker bitcoin trader thing that's like you know that happens on screen or like um like through text or something that just suddenly overnight his his stock like on an app it just goes through the roof and like he immediately sells it and do you know what because it becomes a public downfall for timothy <laughs> and it could be something where the people see that this guy is like like the public actually m- pump m- like the public invest in this currency mm. and then that shoots the value of it high yeah that's what happens with a lot of influencers is they get behind the currency and they get their yes. followers to like yeah. make it feel like it has value and then what happens then is the influencers just kind of secretly sell it off yes. by saying they're still supporting it mm-hmm. you can play in this space even though I don't really like to do cryptocurrency or NFTs in narratives because it takes a lot of explanation. Totally. Yeah. And by the time the movie was, is, was whatever be made, it would be some other, you know, currency or NFTs would be like long since a thing of the past, but, but it feels like to go with his character where he didn't want to become the face of this, that if he's forced to become the face of this organization now that has no money, people will see him and support him and then it will fill up the fund again or a yes. version of it. Yeah. So it's kind of like that, like you connect it with his arc of leadership becoming, yeah, becoming the leader, yeah. but also like public becoming facing. the represent the public face, the, the representative of this organization. 
And it's because he actually takes that role on that the money comes back. You can honestly even get rid of the and, and like the crypto side of things and just people literally invest in him because it's a public story. Uh, so the money yeah. was poured out, but the public then get behind him because he's exposed yeah. the dirty businessman, pseudo politician. And people are like, well, we believe in his cause. And then yes. they literally, he wakes up the next day and like the fun, like he's got. It's, t- a, it's a returned day. tenfold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, love so I don't think we, I don't think, I think that simplified version, it's so funny when it happens when you just go back to what the character arc is and normally the answer is there, right? <laughs> <It's> exactly, like, <laughs> because, because, you know, it's like if he had have put himself forward a bit more, maybe at the beginning, maybe he might have um, not gotten mixed up with Timothy, right? Exactly, he, yeah. Uh, but now at the very end, he puts himself forward by being the face, be being the face of the chaos of it all, of the catastrophe of it all, and the uh, victory over beating the bad guys, and people connect with that, and people see him as this leader, this hero, and who's really ultimately fighting for a great cause that everyone can get behind, yeah. and it uplifts people, it inspires people, and then he's like, "Whoa, this is better than it even was. The fund is even better than it was in the first place." Yeah, I I think that's it. Because even in that kind of public talk where it's like he has taken down an organization, taken down Timothy, and he's gone, but I let everybody else down. I, I, I let them yeah. down. You know, like he's not even celebrating. Yes. Like he's still on what his initial emotion was. Mm-hmm. And that's what resonates with everybody. It was like, why is like, no, we can help him. So it's yeah, of- it's that it's that moment at the end where he's kind of like, moping a little bit even though he has saved the day in a lot of ways he's moping because he's thinking about all of the veterans that he's let down and his Mm -hmm. wife is like you gotta come see this you know yeah yeah it's whatever it is it's everyone standing out the front lawn or the the computer stock has like you know on the website it's it's the crowdfunding side has uh, exploded Yeah. yeah yeah I think that's as good as you're going to get off the top part. That's <laughs> really right there. <laughs> no, I think as an explanation, I think that really tracks. Um, for a first, or... for a dirty first draft, as you say, like that's that's pretty damn good for what, uh, an hour and a half or so, you know? Yeah, yeah. I'm 100%. We did yeah, it. We did we, it. Who knew we still have it in us after all these years? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And... No, I think there's a lot you could play with. I actually really enjoy that character. Uh, there's a quite a few different settings that there's a classicness to it. Like we're yes. literally digging into North by Northwest and classic mm-hmm. thrillers, but also playing with very contemporary things like startup culture and you yeah. know, it was like co- this collision together. Yeah, you're playing. And also, with- there's that the, the midnight run of it all, the Jackie Chan kind of stuff. Like I think that adds such a layer of fun to it you know that you miss from these really intense action thrillers like i love john wick i love you know denzel washington and taken and stuff like that but like adding some of that kind of fun back into it like just really makes me excited to see that film it's true because i actually do miss earnestness a Mm. lot in cinema and i think those kind of action films maintain this kind of we're embracing what we are we're not we're not apologizing for being like an act an all-out action film however when we got into this i was like leaning towards kind of that fun kind yeah. of like kind of silliness even like once you said bruce campbell it's hard not to i know i way. know uh, uh yeah i like it i like i like yeah. what the the tone that we've landed on where you can the meter can go into a serious way but it's kind of always kind of a little tongue in cheek, tongue. Is yeah, there. but there's still. A, I think by having that foundation of he's he he has something to overcome himself, and he's trying to help the veterans. I think that adds kind of like a sincerity and wholesomeness to it that you kind of like intentionally undercut with the uh, outrageousness of the action. So now all that's left is come up with a title. Yeah, it's actually, I'm just thinking, it's funny, like, trying to come up with a title when you don't have, like, 
any words in front of you that you've written you know like when you've written a script and you're like going through it oh maybe there's a line someone says or something and I'm like oh it, it makes it kind of tricky but what are you is there that kind of is jumping out to you well it depends on which way you want to go with it like do you want to focus on kind of the veteran nature of them like veterans day or the vet or do you want to go with the regret of like he made a decision and it's like one bad day and like kind of like i like that because that makes me feel like I, i'm getting more of a sort of not comedy but it's 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 maybe it's humorous it's kind of like uh that that's the snowball effect of of how everything goes wrong right he wants to like he regrets it so he wishes he could um he wishes like it didn't happen or he's he's actively mm -hmm. trying to change it back to where like right, you could so take it, it back happen. you could take back yeah. the decision yeah there it is <laughs> the take back the take back <laughs> yeah yeah that's it yeah oh, that's that's, cool. the, that's the core of it i want to see like, that movie the take back <laughs> yeah. yeah and he literally he, he wants to take back his decision but there's also many times where he has to take back the person he's trying to like say and he's trying yeah and he's trying to take back the fund as well yeah like, yeah the, yeah, I can picture the the poster, and it is very it's midnight run esque. You know, uh, it's, yeah. it's kind of a bit. Um, he just looks like he's been caught caught up in this whole chaotic thing. Yeah, there's a bit of bewilderment too, which helps. Bewilderment, exactly. Yeah, yeah, I love that. Yeah, that's fun. All right, so there it is. We have yeah. finished uh, from beginning to end of the wow. dirty first draft of the take back. I feel I feel like we've really did something here today and I'm just oh that that felt great. Thank you so much for that, Chris. No, thank you. And for everybody watching, uh thank you so much for listening or watching this. Uh if you'd love to learn more, uh please subscribe to the Writing Chops YouTube channel. That's where we put out predominantly most of the stuff. This should also be on a podcast feed soon enough as well. Um Maybe you can tell them uh, a little bit where they can find you, Connor. I sure. see that you're the hidden station, but you also have a different yeah. podcast as well. Yeah, right? absolutely. So uh, if you're looking at the video here, you'll see underneath my name, The Hidden Station. That's a podcast that I created, kind of a passion project, very much uh, spooky storytelling. Chris, you were on the very first episode, I think it was, uh, a long time ago. Uh, there's some great interviews with horror creators and some sort of radio drama kind of stuff. Very like just an outlet for my creativity over the years and the creativity of my my friends um so check that out it's uh, everywhere you get podcasts and then i also have a current podcast called fad camp fad camp and uh, i host it with a colleague of mine called grace mulvey she's a comedian and we just talk about all the crazy and bizarre things we've ever done in our lives to try to lose weight and uh it's a lot of fun wonderful yeah check that out on most likely all everywhere you get podcasts. podcasts yeah exactly yeah and the, guys thank you so much for watching and i'll check i'll catch you next time for another story breakers